Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coogan Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn... You get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up. This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV. We're in London. I'm glad to be joined by my good friend Malik Scott. It's been a while. How are things, Malik? Good. What's up, brother? Yeah, all good, man. Uh, you've been craving for this opportunity for Gerald Washington. I know, yeah. obviously, he's been in some, in some massive fights, but yeah. more recently, you've really wanted him to get back in the frame. So if he goes and beats Derek Chisora at the O2 this Saturday, yeah. he's right back in the mix, Malik. Yeah, yeah. after he beat Chisora, I, want, I have interest in him fighting Andy Ruiz. Um, I want Andy Ruiz next for Gerald Washington. Andy Ruiz, he did not want to fight, you know. Yeah, so you want him to fight Andy Ruiz? I want him to fight Andy Ruiz. Um, I, no, I want, I, want, I want Andy Ruiz for Gerald after Gerald beat your sword Saturday. Mm. That's the fight I'm looking forward to for Gerald Washington. Um, but, yeah, what, what was the question? I'm sorry, I got... No, I was just saying he's right back in the mix if he beats Derek Chisora. Absolutely. So, 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 so back into the mix that I want him to fight Andy Ruiz Wait. next. Mm. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Okay. Why does Gerald beat Derek this Saturday? Um, well, he just got the tools. He's not a big, slow guy. Uh, he's strong. He can be physical when he wants. Um, he's intelligent. Um, he has will. Um, to me, all he has to do is stay focused and, and, and in a concentrative mode the whole fight. You can't fight Derek every round, every fight. You just can't. Um, and we have an incredible game plan. You know, I draw it up pretty good, and it's Gerald's job to go in there and do the physical part, and I believe he's going to do that. Without being disrespectful to Derek, do you think yes. also you're getting Derek at a good time, Malik? What do you mean? And this, as in the point he's at in his career? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. If any, if any Derek Chisora was going to have problems with Gerald Washington, it's this Derek Chisora. You know what I mean? He's not the same, which is not a bad thing. Father Tom is undefeated. Um, and uh, I just believe it's a good time. It's a great opportunity, and I'm happy Gerald got the shot, and we're going to take full advantage of it. How close was the fight with Anthony Joshua for Gerald? It was Saturday? very close. It was close enough that we was uh, presented a, a deal. Um, the business had to be a little bit more correct. And then from there, you know, time went on, silence went on, and then here Helene has got the shot, which is good, you know, which is it's not a thing, but obviously they're protecting I wouldn't say protecting. They're picking the best source of competition for AJ that is suitable and he was shine to get him to January to Deontay Wilder. How do you feel about that, though? You know, Joshua's fighting Hellenius. I know it's last minute for those guys, so that to make it yes, move yes, quickly. Yes. But someone that Deontay obviously wiped out in a round. Decapitated from the back leg, from the back foot. Yeah. So can we really learn much in terms yeah, of... Yeah, but at this stage, in my opinion... In AJ's career, he he has so many high-level fights that if it's any time he should pick an opponent he thinks he's going to win or thinks he's not going to win, he thinks he's going to beat and have a victory to get to a higher, dangerous opponent like Deontay is now. You have to protect your goose. Last time they didn't protect the goose and we seen what happened. So shout out to them for being good learners because last time they was in this situation, they fought Angel Ruiz, and we all know what happened with that. Even though he came back and won, it was tragic what happened to him in New York in his first time in the States. So obviously you could tell by their choice of opponent this time. They learned from that, and they're looking to do bigger and better things for January, from what I'm hearing. Well, what, what is going on with Deontay and Andy? Bro, Andy don't want to fight Deontay. He does not want to fight. Outpricing him. himself? Majorly outpricing himself. Listen to how this go. When, you, when you're a champion, you're defending the title, you get paid big bucks. Especially when you wanted how Andy did in your first defenses against the same guy, and it's in Saudi Arabia where the revenue is pretty high. He's, he got paid more than he ever did. All right, you lost that title now. That title, you don't have that title no more, so now you're not going to be making that same type of revenue. But in him and his father mind, they feel as though they should be getting still that same kind of money. You don't get championship money when you're not a championship fighter. You're a contender now. you got to earn your way back up. Yeah, he's in a high echelon of the contenders, but he's still a contender. But he tried to outprice himself. But modern day fighters, that's a new way of saying you don't want to fight. You outprice yourself, and it looks good for the sake of good business. But if they did fight, that would have been his first time getting knocked out cold by someone. 
because Deontay, oh, we had it all written out for him. It was about to be bad for Andy. So, you know, I'm glad that they didn't take the fight in that hand because that's one of those fights that the referee really would have had to watch out for Andy Ruiz because we was going to do a real number on him. It was going to be kind of like Hellenius, but a little bit worse. Because imagine Ruiz just falling like that. Oh, it, it looked bad. And that's what we had planned. On he constructed the whole plan. Absolutely. I draw it up, baby, and that's what we did. <laughs> It's quite interesting you said that because um, Tyson Fury's side and Andy Ruiz were trying to get that fight. Yeah. And Tyson Fury's promoter, Frank Warren, said that they Andy outpriced him himself. himself. Eddie just, you know, thought that Andy was going to outprice himself and just did that Instagram post for a bit of clout for this Saturday. Yes. And now, in terms of a Team Wilder's perspective, you're saying the same thing. So Yeah. So And, and we all don't even talk to each other. Like, Frank and Eddie, they may talk, but... It's all like... It's all the same. It's everyone saying. is saying the so same you're thing you're okay with Deontay not having a fight um, and jumping in with Anthony in January, yeah? I wouldn't say I'm okay with it. If we can get some action beforehand, I would love it. It will work in my favor. If we can't, life happens in boxing, happens and life goes on. Either way, that would not control the performance against Anthony Joshua in January. Deontay's going to be more ready than he's ever been. He's going to be more sharper. And he's still going to be the most dynamic fighter in the history of the sport. Those clips that you put out on Instagram and he puts out on Instagram. Yes. They, I can't quite pinpoint what it is, but something looks different with Deontay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I believe his mind is open. When his mind is open, he's more accepting to all information. I am the information that he's accepted to. We strategize together. I show him film studies of things that I want us to work on. If he tried, we could say not go against it, but if he questioned it, I don't talk with my mouth to Deontay. I show him film. So it goes from not what we are thinking, let's go off of what we see. Mm -hmm. What we see is you cross feet right here, and that should be fixed. What we see is your right hand was down right here when you was answering the phone, when you wasn't answering the phone, and that should be fixed. What we see right here is your positioning was off with that shot, that's why I missed. So we get to fix things on the fly from strategy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. I know yeah. exactly what I'm about. Film study. That's basically, at the highest level. Do you reckon he uh, ends Anthony Joshua's career? Um, that's up to him. I reckon he ended Robert Hellenius' career. But well, Robert Hellenius here fighting Anthony Joshua. But to me, in, to me, in your mind, the way Deontay's going to beat Anthony Joshua? Oh, it's still a three-round fight to me. Three rounds? Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah, I've said that. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I believe stylistically, he'll take chances in the first three rounds and Deontay will clip him. When he trains with you, is, is he the man that he thinks about constantly? Who, AJ? Mm -hmm. No, De Deontay has a smorgasbord of opponents that we're always ready for. So we'll just see and however it happens. Eddie, he's just said three rounds, uh, Deontay doing? and AJ. Oh, yeah. yeah, my prediction is the same. No, for the last, last two years. Last longer than that. <laughs> 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 same prediction. You know what I mean? It's nothing, it's nothing personal. Same prediction, baby. Three rounds. Well, listen, Malik, best of luck with Gerald yeah. Washington this Saturday uh, with Derek Chisora and then. I'm sure we'll be having another conversation if Joshua gets the win this Saturday against Hellenius. If he gets the win. If absolutely. he gets the win. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the styles make fights, man. Hellenius is long, rangy. He's, he he's heavy-handed. He can punch. Um, is Deontay going to be watching this Saturday? Has he told yeah, you? Yeah. If I ask him to, he'll watch. Besides that, he'll be doing something, dealing with one of his properties, <laughs> buying some stuff. You know, he's, not a, he's not really into the boxer thing how I am. I, I take that place for him. So, you know what I mean? We'll watch it together after the fight or something like that, but we'll see. I probably would have him watch it though. Well, I appreciate it. So I'm good to see you in London. God right? bless you, brother. Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Kukan Cassius, and some very special guests Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So, in the words of Eddie Hearn, you get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up.